Right, life through the eyes of someone living with bipolar. So we know what the common symptoms are, or what we associate with bipolar. Those being mood fluctuations, you're high, then you're low, happy, manic, you have depressive stages. But what do we really think day to day? Why am I making this video? Well, there's many videos out there which aren't truly accurate in terms of what it's actually like to live with bipolar day to day. They'll often explain what it's like to be in a manic stage or a depressive stage. But what about when the symptoms are stable? That's what I'm going to talk about in this video because I personally don't know whether my stable symptoms are what a normal person would have but this video might allow you to find out um, another reason I'm making this video is because by me talking about my own thoughts and feelings it allows the service and care to get more accurate so we can diagnose people earlier with bipolar and we can help prevent things such as psychosis or worse happening so that's exactly why I'm making this just before I start, I just want to make the point that everything that I say is based on my own thoughts and feelings. I'm not covering everyone with bipolar because obviously I only know from my first hand experience. So just wanted to clarify that. So I feel like my mind works a little bit on overdrive compared to what could be considered normal. I don't know that for a fact, but there's some reasons why I say that. So I struggle to focus or pay attention. Sometimes I struggle to sit still. I feel like I'm a little bit more creative than others. Sometimes I struggle switching off at night when I'm in asleep. So those are the things which make me think, yeah, possibly I'm working on a little bit of overdrive. My brain's firing a little bit more than what a usual person would be. One thing that I notice for sure is that I feel like I have a low social battery. And that might surprise some people, especially my friends and family watching this, because they're like, oh, you're like the life and soul of the party. But I have to limit it because like if I'm out or like in a busy place, I'll just get drained so quickly. And I don't know whether it's because my subconscious mind is taking things in like loads of things at once. For example, like I'll be analyzing, I'll be on the train, for example, I'll be analyzing what someone's wearing, how they present themselves, the cleanliness, how they sit. And then I, I think I tried to piece together like the whole world in my mind um, and think like, what was their upbringing like? Um, what are their motives? What drives them? All from like analyzing one person. So potentially like when I'm out and a lot's going on, I'm taking in all these things. And at the same time, obviously trying to interact in a social situation, I sometimes get anxiety, social anxiety, and it's just everything's heightened. So. And I'm not saying I don't enjoy going out and socializing, partying, having fun or whatever. I'm all for it. But when it comes to the end of the night, all I want to do is just go home, chill out. And it could be like a week before I want to do something like that again. Another thing I notice about myself is if I'm in a disagreement or I find that I've done something wrong, I just go quiet. I think that might be a fight, flight or freeze thing. I definitely freeze. But I just want to shut myself in a room and just think things through um, it could potentially be because I'm conscious of doing something and, and that being the wrong thing or saying something that I shouldn't say in that moment so my way of dealing things is just yeah just to go quiet I find it's usually anywhere between 15 minutes and an hour um, if it's someone that's outside of my immediate family that could be longer until they take action because I, I find that I won't be the one to try and heal this awkwardness that's gone on. When I say things out loud, especially in my past therapy sessions, it makes me think about it more and I hear myself saying things. Making YouTube videos is great because it's almost like a form of therapy. I'm like, I could work on that. And the next thing I'm about to say is may or may not be a symptom of bipolar at all. But again, like I'm saying, I'm just getting it out there. You never know, people might start piecing things together. And that's that my days always seem to have this underlying or like baseline 
anxiety. And I could be doing the most exciting, fun thing. I, I could be on holiday, but there's just this constant small worry. I find it hard to switch off about work, even when I'm away. And I think that probably is my biggest anxiety, is work and my financial situation. I struggle to ever feel truly present in a situation because there's always this, oh, but this could go wrong, that could go wrong. Oh, I've got to try and do this to minimize this problem or that problem. And I probably mask it really well to people, but there's always something there. And I look around and I think, does everyone have this? I wonder what it's like just to truly be present. And I've done things to try and work on it. I've tried yoga, meditation, um, exercise. Obviously that's supposed to help in the moment, but yeah, I can, I can get that presentness for a small amount of time, but having it sustained, really struggle. I don't know if it's where I live in the UK and there's constantly things going on. There's, there's traffic, there's um, advertisements, there's this news article, there's fear being thrown around everywhere. And I'm trying to avoid it and I don't know if that's the cause. God knows, but it's there, I know that for sure. And whilst I'm on the subject of work, I always feel like there has to be something more to life. Like there's got to be a better way of us doing things as the human race. I was watching something recently with my partner, it's called Cosmos. And when you just think about the history of all of time since the supposed Big Bang. Just think like, God, we're, we have this massive wealth divide on the planet and the, the way we do things, why do we even, why do we even have money? Shouldn't we be sharing out what's already there on the planet? And then I'm like, oh, isn't that communism? And then I think, wait, is capitalism the right way of doing things? Clearly not because there's this wealth divide and there's poverty. And then I think, oh, like, Blimey, there, there just must be a better way, but... And I get worked up in this whole sort of economic, political jumble in my head, and I think, I don't have the answer, and I'm almost powerless because it's just me. How can we make this everything better? And then I just think, as you can probably tell, my mind does work on overdrive. So, on the subject of overdrive, something which I do notice differently is that I'm a light sleeper and if something's on my mind I'm stressed about something or, an an or I'm anxious it could be work-wise it could be a social situation a problem in the family or whatever I really struggle to switch off so I could wake up at like two or three in the morning and I think god like this is just a nightmare like I can't get back to sleep I just stay up from then luckily this Garmin, which I use for running, I originally bought it just for the accurate GPS, has been a massive help because where I'm really conscious of my health and fitness and the battery life lasts like 14 days, it's always on, I wear it to sleep and if I wake up at that time and I click the buttons to say that I'm awake, it'll be like poor sleep score. And I'll be like, yeah, why on earth was I getting out? I thought I was awake, but it's just my mind being active. So now, since I've had this the past month or so, I've been trying to get that higher sleep score and just it's made me realize that no, I'm not fully recovered based on heart rate variability and everything like that and stress levels. That's helped massively. So if you are out there and you do struggle with this, I am going to put the link in the bio. I'm going to plug it. Um, this is the Gar Garmin, apologies, Forerunner 255. And I searched what is the um, what is the GPS technology, which is in the more expensive ones, like the five, six hundred pound ones. Which Garmin is that in? Which is the lowest cost one? And it came up with this: the Garmin four hundred two five, yeah, two five five. I got this for two hundred and twenty pound in Argos, but it's gone up in price now. So I'm going to put the like I say, put the, the link in the description. Give it a go. On a more positive note. I feel like I'm very creative and I noticed this from very young so maybe at the age of like eight or nine I used to draw and um, color in pictures of Man United players Man United logos I'm a big United fan and football boots and bits and pieces like that and the career I'm in now in web design 
it's definitely carried that over and aside from what we commonly think of creativity in terms of like music and art and bits and pieces like that i feel like i bring the creativity into work and business so that could be analyzing systems and processes and thinking of things in terms of like the bigger picture how you could do something in marketing it affects sales and um you make this change it's part of this sales funnel um how improving an hr department improves customer service meaning like increased turnover i feel like that's where my bipolar is definitely a good thing so i'm going to end it on a positive note so if you like these videos i know they're very different but i'd appreciate if you could support the channel by hitting the subscribe button or the like button and all of your comments i'm telling you to do three things here are genuinely appreciated because it shows that there are more people out there that suffer and when you drop your tips and your feedback and stuff and advice to others it helps sort of build a community and make people feel more normal so thanks keep doing that and stay tuned for the next one thank you